Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 21st, the day after International Pipe Smoking Day. I hope you all had a fantastic uh, IPSD yesterday. I certainly had quite a few bowls and uh, had a great day. Had a great day in general. Wife and I went for one of our famous drives. It was nice though. We wound up at the... Uh, there's a large reservoir here called uh, Green Green Lane Park, and uh, it's frozen over, and it was snowing, and we're, it was just really pretty, you know. It was uh, kind of Christmas snow globey looking, uh, so so that was nice, and uh, did a little bit of shopping, very little, and uh, then came home. So it was a nice afternoon. Uh, today, don't know exactly what the the day holds, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll we'll get it figured out. Anyway, uh, it's Sunday morning. Yesterday was International Pipe Smoking Day, so today I think I I'm okay with a cigar. And this is actually a Tierra Vulcan uh, Corto. You can see that. Uh, this is a uh, Nicaraguan. I actually am not sure where this where I got this. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I've had several people send me cigars. Uh, one was in a, a trade that I did with, uh, is it MC Cigar 77 or M Cigar 77 on Instagram? Um, yeah, which were a lot of great cigars, and it might have been in that set, but I, and, and then my wife buys them for me when she goes to Pittsburgh, and I just got them mixed up in the humidor, and I don't know. I don't know how I got this, but I'm going to smoke it. Uh, I'm going to smoke it. So it is a Nicaraguan uh, Jalapa Valley leaf, supposedly. Very sweet and tasty, according to the uh, literature. That was a very science geek thing for me to say, literature. Let me get this foot band off here. I know why they put the bands on the cigars and everything, but boy, I, I'd be so happy if I could just buy a, well, you know, you can, but they're not very good cigars. If I could buy a box of just unbanded cigars, uh, you know, just label on the box. I hate picking the darn things off. Oh, that is very nicely made. Let's give it a try. For what it's worth, Cigar Aficionado rated this a 92. Yeah. Not that I don't trust Cigar Aficionado. I just literally do not know what that's worth. So far, so good. It was actually too cold to open the window here, so I hope I don't get in trouble. Not that I've ever gotten in trouble, but when I smoke cigars, I try to be, I try to either smoke them outside or to smoke them down here with the air filter on and the window open. Just because cigar smoke has a way of um, hanging around. Pipe smoke, not so much. By the way, I got this guy out. For some reason, International Pipe Smoking Day seemed like it needed the camel lighter. <laughs> I love this. It, it was just an old promotional thing, but you know, it's got the little cap that clamps down over top of the the wick, and uh, yeah, just cute. 
not terribly well made, but it looks like it's well made. So, having a cigar today, because it's Sunday morning and I really wanted to have a cigar. But as I was lighting it and thinking about Cigar Aficionado, it occurred to me. that this would be a, a good opportunity to recognize the passing of, uh, of Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, putting politics and personality aside, probably did more for the cigar industry than I think people realize. Um, he really was a uh, a big reason why cigars suddenly became popular again in the uh, I guess it was in the, the mid 90s. And that's he was a big reason why cigars also became expensive. A big part of the reason why I should say. But he was also a very interesting person. I did not listen to his radio program. I heard it a few times, but... I've never really been interested in... Uh, political talk radio, and actually I can barely tolerate sports talk radio. Um, I just don't, I don't, it just doesn't work for me. You know, I, I like to hear debate. I like to hear ideas being expressed and challenged. I know that's what debate means. I don't want to just hear somebody monologuing and then a whole string of people calling in to say that they agree with the monologue. Uh, or maybe they disagree on some minor point and then they get squashed. I, and and nothing against what he did, uh, you know. I just it just wasn't my thing. What you know? It's funny because I this wasn't my thing. But you got to admit he was a force to be reckoned with, and he certainly changed for better or worse. The, the concept of talk radio. And, you know, that's been used by both sides of the aisle to, uh, again, for better or worse. I had a, a friend, a good friend, and uh, kind of lost touch with him over the years. He moved, I moved. But uh, he was a really big fan of Rush Limbaugh. Subscribed to the Limbaugh letter. It was a monthly little sort of photocopy paper thing that you'd get. Uh, I don't remember if it, if it was... I may be misstating that. My memory of it was that it was like pages stapled together, but maybe it was something else. I, I, I might be, be accurate about that. So he's probably a lot more upset right now. Well, maybe not upset, but you know, sad. It's funny when... when Celebrities, if, if I can call him a celebrity, uh, pass. Well, let's stop for a minute there. It was, was he a celebrity? I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess he was. I don't, I don't know if I, if I consider like 
a reporter to be a celebrity. I don't think a reporter should be a celebrity. Yeah, you know, that's, that's why I stopped. So somebody that's doing real journalism should disappear behind the journalism, right? The, the, the name should just be the name, and, and then the story should stand on its own. And you should read the story because of the quality of the writing and, and the interest in the topic. If you're picking up a story and reading it because of the person that wrote it, that's a concern then, because that's what you do when you read fiction, right? So I would not consider a true journalist to be a celebrity. I think those two things are impossible to have in the same person. But uh, I also don't necessarily think that uh, you would consider Limbaugh to be a true journalist. He was a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was a political entertainer. There we go. And there's a lot of political entertainers out there these days. Unfortunately, journalists are few and far between, but political entertainers abound. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm, you guys know me well enough to know where I sit politically. I'm, I'm in no means a uh, anti-Limbaugh guy. I, I was very well, polit and still am very well politically aligned with where he was coming from. So I get it, I, and I'm not trying to in any way disparage him. I'm, I'm just making a comment on the state of our media and the fact that we you know really don't have journalists anymore i can't say that he was the beginning of that process but he certainly was a part of it i sometimes am really starved for a good news story <clears throat> and what I mean by that is a really well-written expose or just an investigative reporting type thing where somebody goes in and really takes a story apart and gets to the bottom of it and cites their sources and, you know, journalism. And... Yeah, I got to the point where I was fact checking the fact checkers and then I just gave up because it's too much work and I don't care. You know, I don't care enough to to have to spend half my life trying to figure out what's real. Um I got a got a humidor of cigars, I got a seller of tobacco, I've got good coffee. Activism is a kid's game. Uh, will somebody replace Limbaugh? Not likely. Not likely. He was really a, a, a force to be reckoned with. I, I don't think... You know, the guys that immediately spring to mind are people like uh, Mark Levine and Sean Hannity. They're, they're not of his caliber. It was personality. It was, it was personality and force of personality that made him what he was, much more so than his, uh, his intellect, uh, which was quite good. But it was, it was his personality that made him. And, uh, you know, as I've said many times, it's important to, to hear both sides of the story, to, to, to look at both sides of the argument. And sometimes, even if you disagree with someone like Limbaugh, it's worth tuning in once in a while just to 
just to find out how the other side's thinking and to, and to challenge yourself. Yeah, so, again, I wasn't a big, not that I wasn't a big fan, I just did not watch him, listen to him. He was on TV for a while, I remember that. I didn't watch it, uh, maybe an episode or two. Not because I didn't like it, but because I uh, just wasn't interested. But... He is gone. God rest his soul. The Vulcan is um, very nice. Am I getting a lot of complexity from it? It's very smooth. Nice. So I wanted to um, mention a couple things. Uh, last Friday night, and I, I do not remember who this was. It might have been Knight Rider. I, I cannot remember. But someone in the chat came up with the idea of having a group first impression video. And I really liked this idea. Uh, so what we decided to do, and so far it's a very nation idea, but like your feedback on this, and I'd love you to join in. Um, we're a group of us, uh, and by us I mean people in the YTPC, are ordering Windjammer from Cornell uh, from uh, GLP. It's it's his newest blend. It's a burly Virginia preak with some rum. It, it, read the description. It sounds very good. Uh, just came out in the past couple of weeks, and Eddie Nook has it at the Eddie Nook. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. Eddie Gray has it at the Pipe Nook. <laughs> Just shorten that down, contraction. Uh, but Windjammer, it sounds interesting, and I've ordered some, and other folks have ordered some, and the idea is that we're going to actually pop open the tins during a Zoom meetup that will be part of my uh, Friday live stream at some date in the future. And I don't know when. Uh, we'll have to get it scheduled. But we need people to do it. Uh, so far, I have exactly one volunteer. <laughs> so <laughs> if you'd like to get some Windjammer and not open it until we have a, a, a Zoom meetup on a, on a Friday night and join us all in a first impressions chat, uh, you don't have to be the master tobacco taster. Just somebody that enjoys their pipes and wants to try a new blend. Uh, be be great to to have that chat from from all perspectives. You know, somebody that really knows their tobacco to somebody that's a beginner doesn't matter because what the beginner thinks of it is perhaps more insightful because they're uh, coming at it with a fresh approach. You know, I might tell you that it's uh, got some citrus notes, and they might say. Uh, this thing is is really sharp and tart, and I don't like it. And you know, they, they, they we're both saying the same thing, but one you might say, "Oh, well, I could try that," and the other you might say, "Ah, that's not what I want." Important, uh, whatever I just said. Uh, well, folks, I, I I got a bit more rambly here than I usually like to do on Sunday mornings. I hope. You found that interesting. Uh, the cigar triggered it. My plan was to tell you about my dogs in the snow. And let me see how long this video has been going. Yeah, we're not at 20 minutes yet. I'll quickly tell you about my dogs in the snow. Uh, we got So we got a lot of snow. There's probably about maybe eight inches still on the grass in my yard you know it's it's melted over time but about eight inches and it's got you know that's the surface is frozen so we've, we had some freezing rain and some really cold nights and all that so there's this layer of ice on the top of this but below it is soft snow and 
If you have dogs and you live anywhere where there's snow, you've probably seen this, and it is just hilarious. The dog goes out and walks, and the, the ice supports their weight, but just for a second, and then they fall through. And to watch them try to walk around is just so funny, because you know, they're not in any danger, I'm not being cruel, but they're taking these very ginger steps, and, and like, boom, they fall down. <laughs> It's just, I don't know why it's funny, but I could, I could spend hours watching this. I should have videotaped it, but I videotaped it. Got him old. <laughs> anyway, that's what I planned to talk about this morning. And I, I lit this up and immediately thought of Limbaugh, and there we went. I hope you had a great International Pipe Smoking Day yesterday. I hope you're really enjoying your Sunday, and I hope you have a great week ahead. I'll be back on Wednesday with something. Uh, this coming Friday is Virtual Pipe Club. So join us if you can, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's always a good time. Beyond that, have a great week. And until we talk again, I will look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.